Hello everyone, thank you for joining. My name is Dmitry Vinik and I'm a developer advocate on the Facebook open source team. Today we'll talk about N, a project that was originally created at Facebook and now part of a Linux foundation. So let's take a look at N a bit closer. All right, thank you everyone. As I said, today's presentation is about N and making data easy in Go, programming language. So without further ado, let's take a look closer. And what do I do? So basically, I'd like to introduce myself and tell you a bit more about my work and uh, why I'm giving this presentation. About myself, as I mentioned, I'm a developer advocate at the on the Facebook open source team. And what we do is that we are empowering diverse communities through open source. Uh, currently, we actually redid our website. And if I were to show you that pretty briefly, it's a brand new look. So opensource.fb.com, you can find a massive portfolio of ours with the different projects that we have. You can fi uh, find our blog, developers.facebook.com. You can also find our uh, YouTube channel where we have a great series about um, about all our where we have a great series about Facebook open source projects like Ant. So you can find more materials there. And also, as I mentioned, we have a great blog and the podcast The Deep. So let's get back to the slides. For myself personally, I am focused on at Facebook or around mobile pillar, which includes Android, iOS, and hybrid applications. Basically, things like React Native that lets you uh, build projects in the hybrid space, basically that can target Android and iOS using your React knowledge. Uh, Litho, pr project that lets you build UIs with Android. Uh, Fresco, where you can deal with Im uh, image management and Flipper that ha lets you debug uh, software across different platforms. In particular for React Native, it's a great use case. All right, more importantly, I'm passionate about open source and I'd like to contribute. And that's why I'm giving this presentation today at uh, this conference. All right, so Ant. Ant, as I said, was originally created at Facebook and now has since moved to Linux Foundation. But more importantly, what is Ant? And is ORM for Go programming language. What What is ORM? That's obviously a great question. That's why this presentation is here. ORM stands for Object Relational Mapping. Uh, if I were to define it a bit more, it's a technique for converting data between incompatible type systems using object-oriented programming languages. I grabbed this quote from the best online source ever, which is Wikipedia, of course. Ultimately, it doesn't matter exactly what it says here. What m matters the most is that it helps us to work with data. In the past, I've worked with ORM across different programming languages, not just Go. I've used it uh, for Java, Hibernate, Hibernate, I believe, is one of the popular ones. There are many other ones for different programming languages. Uh, in particular, what it means is imagine you have a, you know, uh, object, user, and user has a user ID, first name, and last name basically those fields, uh, where user ID is the unique field for this uh, instance of the object. And then you have a table, let's say it's in some sort of dat database, and you name your table user table. And it has the same fields, user ID, which is a primary key, which basically identifies the instance of a table, and also has a first name and last name, which basically maps to the object. But for us to be able to avoid complex transactions, writing of uh, those SQL transactions ourselves or whatever else we might be using, that's where ORM comes into play. And ORM creates this connection, lets you use your programming language of choice, in this case, low or Go programming language, and we can operate with the table directly and manage our data, work with the data. So ORM in this case, in this presentation, is gonna be end, and in terms of the what class we're working with is user.go and user table will still remain to be a user table. So why is ORM important? As I said before, it's all about the data. Everything today is about data. Uh, most applications rely on data, use data, process data, curate that data. It's all about data. And that's why whether the company is big or small, they do rely on that and ORM helps developers, helps companies to work with that data in a secure way, in an efficient way, and in a scalable way. And as I said, most apps are data-driven. 
you don't have to go far, you know, if you're talking about IoT processing with Google and Google Cloud, they obviously have data. They have storage, they deal with data and help you to work with data. If you're talking about AWS, another cloud computing service provider, they're the same thing. They also have to deal with data, dat- databases of some kind. And if we obviously, I work for Facebook, if I were to bring an example of a Facebook service, Facebook Scribe, as we call it, uh, which is basically a log processor, we're also dealing with logs, which is one way to preserve data and w- work with data. And that's where ORM will come, come in ha- handy as well. So data is important. There's obviously no denying it. But it also means that ORM is important. But enough with theory. I mean, I've talked about why and what quite extensively at this point. Let's look at the code. And if I were to give you introduction to Ant, really briefly, uh, fortunately, the website for Ant is, is a great website. They have plenty of documentation. I'll heavily rely on that today as well for this presentation. So if I were to just try and initialize it, uh, initialize and go on my machine, the only thing I need to do is run this operation, this simple command, go, uh, get, and go, and then initialize uh, the project. Uh, when I initialize a project, I say go mod init, and I call give a project a name of some sort. And after I run it, I will create this simple, for m- in my case, I created a project that I called and go the dash talk, and it basically creates a simple mod fil- uh, file and folder. And then I have to run something to initialize the user. In my case, a user is what basically I want to work with. It's the easiest one to work with because uh, it's th- something that we all dealt with at some point. So I will run this operation and go. I initialize the user. It will produce me simple schema. And in the schema, you can see that it has a couple of important lines. It has the schema definition for the user entity it will have a field uh, fields that the user entity has and more imp- and also importantly it has edges and i'll talk about those briefly in just in just a moment uh, to basically give a bit more meat to this um, uh, example i have to actually add fields edges basically is what le- uh, has uh, you have creation uh, relations between entities but for fields, obviously, it's the properties that uh, give uh, your entity an actual reason for existence. Because why would they be there if there is no there is no real properties behind them or no relations to them? So in this case, I add age name uh, to my user. Might specify some additional uh, properties like make sure the default value is unknown for name and the, the a or condition like age has to be positive. You can be uh, minus 10 for someone who's uh, a user. Th- so then after I define this couple of fields on a schema, I'll run a generate operation on end, and it will create me plenty of files to work with, as you can see here on the left side on my VS code. So if I were to gain to look back at the documentation, explain those steps uh, in more details, fields, as I said, is basically the properties that your entity has user in this case it can be again age name nickname uh, social security number whatever else uh, you need to add to the field uh, to the entity uh, edges are basically relations between different entities uh, in this can- scenario in this example here it has a relation to groups basically a user is part of the group or relation to other users or friends if you talk about some social media uh, platform Another important, again, idea here is the field. As I said before, it's basically the attributes or properties can be whatever you really want it to be. And the great thing is that you can obviously specify its uniqueness, as you can see here, under username is a unique. You can specify some additional auto-generated fields, like for created at field, you can see that you can specify that it has to, uh, at the time of you working with the user entity, it will specify the time of the creation, so it will do it for you. And edges, as I said before, is basically the relations between a user. And this can scenario, in this example, it has a good example of connecting to a path. If a user has a path, one user, as you can see, can, can have multiple paths or connection between users and groups. Multiple users can be part of multiple groups. Uh, and so there is also that relationship relations as well. 
That's what edges are for. And you can see how edges are specified in here down below. So again, so far documentation is a great starting point for anyone who's working with end. Uh, indexes is also something I have to mention. It's basically that lets you uh, retrieve data, work with data and define its uniqueness. Or in other words, why like basically be able to pinpoint a particular item, a particular instance of the table or entity. Uh, in this case, you can see that the combination, it says the combination of first name and last name has to be unique. It's kind of a, I think it's a tricky one, of course, but you can also have a uniqueness on a single field as well, if you wanted to. So it's, you know, it gives you enough power to do basically whatever you'd like with indexes um, while still making sure it's not com too complex for you as either. Uh, mixing is a bit more complex concept, but basically make sure that your code is reusable and you ha can have a composition in your code base, meaning that you can define a certain reusable pieces of schema and then share them across your entities uh, by working with this interface that's been created for Ant called Mixin. And uh, yeah, again, it's a, I, I really appreciate people adding this support upfront when they created Ant because it basically makes sure the developer experience, the reusability, this dry principle, don't repeat yourself, is baked in and it's always appreciated. Annotations is another thing I have to mention when we talk about basics of Ant. Uh, it basically lets you to add some metadata to your fields. Let's say if you're dealing with JSON, basically the web directly, it can be extremely powerful functionality. And again, it's part of the Ant, so you don't have to work work it work out those details too much either. So I've talked about just introduction to Ant really briefly. What are the areas of things that you have to focus on? How to actually get started? It's just a few simple operations and generation of the code that lets you create your entities and work with them. But let's obviously, if we talk about data, there are some operation or CRUD operation, create, read, update, and delete. And let's look at creating entities and how easy it is with Ant. So let's say we have this uh, client. Client is extremely important. Basically, lets us work uh, in Ant. And in here, you can say that uh, see that I'm working with SQLite. Fairly simple. I make sure I open up a connection. I make sure that I close it as well. Uh, if anything fails with the connection, I throw a proper exception. Nothing new here. What Im what's important is this create user function. And the create user function is what we would like to focus on, is how you create a new user. You define it when you define the user entity. And in this case, I have to specify age, name, and make sure I define a context which I'm saving it at. And so if anything failed, you have to deal with the exception the way you generally deal with it. You can format an error into your terminal or send it to some other server, whatever you'd like to, whatever, whatever way you'd like to ma manage it. You might just completely bail on everything and just throw a major exception and you know crush the whole system if you like. So the, in terms of creation, there's it's pretty trivial. Querying entities is quite powerful as well. It's we didn't try to reinvent the wheel here, right? It's uh, about following the best practices that are out there and just making sure the lessons that you've learned elsewhere, you can apply here. And honestly, that's basically the gist of most of the things in software development, just reusing things. Uh, you're using ideas, and as a result, you can bring the knowledge from prior to a new uh, framework, to a new project, and I believe Ant embraces that approach. And that's why here, when I query something, I have to specify where clause, so I know what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this user with uh, name A8M. And so you can see that it's fairly again simple. You specify in what context you're looking at, you're looking at for this user. And again, you handle the exception whatever way you'd like to handle it. Nothing special here either. And there's a lot more to the end. Uh, there's great tutorial that Ant website has already prepared for you. And by the way, I really appreciated the Ant was built with DocuSource and other Facebook open source projects that I highly encourage you to take a look at. It's a static uh, website generator, generator tool that lets you build websites like this. But back to the Ant. Here you can see that uh, there is a great tutorial just going from the first steps, what you need to 
uh, get started with all the way to GraphQL basics if you wanted to integrate your end with GraphQL too. Uh, it also help, dr drives you through query and mutation. You can see that the example that the tutorial lets you build uh, related to a to-do list, building a to-do list is in it. It's like a 101 of uh, new frameworks and uh, new projects that all we always encourage people to try. And you can see that here you just have to create and save in a context that you'd like. And uh, again, as I said, it goes through details on how to work with end and uh, GraphQL example. We also go further, as you know, uh, Facebook, we uh, use Relay quite extensively. It's basically another interface for GraphQL that's uh, in, in this example, we're actually helping people to integrate and along with the Relay node interface. And there's a lot more there. Uh, if you want to migrate data databases uh, with and you can also do that. It also goes into details of how the code generation works in Ant and Graph traver Traversal. Uh, and what I really appreciate is that they cover Ant uh, testing, basically with this package called Ant Test, how to go in and test whatever you've built, whatever you created. And that's, I believe, is extremely important for any production systems. And if you want to really look at the API, there's also Go, go Docs available for Ant as well. But really, all those docs, all those examples, the project itself, it's really all about the community. And so you can always be part of the newsletter where you can see there are quite a few subscribers already. Uh, people bring up their issues, they discuss things, you can get updates. Uh, you can see the blog on the end go website. Uh, and more importantly, you can also go to their Twitter account and see, you know, uh, any new releases that are aligned with and and how things are going with the project basically and of course they use slack at this point you can also take a look at that too so my call to action really for this very short presentation is experiment with different tools including and uh, try to join and community again it's growing it became part of the linux foundation so uh, the investment is there and i'm excited to see where the project will go and more importantly, again, contribute back. Uh, it's a new, fairly new project been out there in open source space. Obviously, you know, they're looking for contribution, they're looking for expanding their code base. So please uh, try to become a part of the community. I'm sure they will welcome you. Thank you so much for listening. Again, a bit about myself, go to my Twitter, Dmitry Vinik, my blog, LinkedIn, or email me directly if you have any questions. I'm very much interested in talking to you more. Thank you so much.